dare we say it, have Manchester United finally figured out their shahid. Man United proven this weekend, and I know many will take uh, to the comment section to go great. Fanboy! Oh, shit, I'm sorry. You just kind of, oh. you allowed me, I, I me, threw the alley for that, I'm good. for the comment I was going to mention. It's not so no, much okay. so. It's okay, thank you. I'm fine. I don't not need so comment. much so that I like this team. What it is, <laughs> is that from what I've taken the first few weeks into the Premier League, um, it's easy to have snap judgment. So I did our clip on Sunday basically stating that Liverpool are out, out of the title race. Um, the, the Jordy said Arsenal five points back in week two. They're done. They're yeah, out. They right. can't win. They literally can't win. Well, when I, I brought up the statistics to back it up, is that Leicester had seven points after three games. Uh, Chelsea and Jose Mourinho's first time had maximum. Um, oh, I thought you meant last six. year. It was like Chelsea relegation battle yeah. last year. That's so it, basically statistically proven is that the teams that are have that do have perfect scores at the moment with nine points at the top of the table: um, Chelsea, Manchester City, Manchester United. Oh, no, no longer. Oh, lost. Manchester yeah, but they're United. looking good. Yeah, like six. Uh, <laughs> the six. reason why Manchester United are the main focus of this discussion is because they proved something to me this mm. weekend. And as a fanboy, it is interesting to hear me say this because uh, it takes a lot to convince me for Manchester United. I'm a very harsh critic of them as I was last year. Mm. But they, they proved this weekend that they don't need to win in glorious, uh, uh, wrapped in a bow tie fashion. They can win through hard grit which Alex Ferguson used to have down to a T, is they would have that winning mentality that at times would be um, non-existent for Manchester United, especially since Alex Ferguson left, is they would come up against adversity and uh, they'd end up leaving with a point or the opposition team would snatch something at the end. Jose Mourinho has installed a sense of belief in their own team that they can win when it comes down to these games that are often up against teams that are backing into their own box and you need to consistently batter away and just hope that something drops. He intelligently uh, installed uh, a couple of substitutions, brought on Mika Tyra and Rashford, who immediately added a different lease of life to that team. And he reaped the rewards. And Manchester United proved that they don't need to win in glorious fashion. They can go in and get the three points when their back is against them. I, have, uh, I had a few observations from Premier League weekend and a few questions. For one, I was comparing, uh, once again, I'm going to compare this Manchester United to last year's Manchester mm -hmm. United. Uh, and weirdly enough, defensively, they're actually not that different. Mm. Jose Mourinho is much better tactically, uh, and he's very much a bigger risk taker in terms of, uh, no, I shouldn't say risk taker. He knows that there's high risk, high reward when you sub in your youth. Yep. I mean, the first uh, teenager to ever score under Jose Mourinho in his long tenure of history is Marcus Rashford, yep. 19 years old, I believe. So he knows that you have to develop the youth. This is something that you called for every single week of through 36 games during the Premier League season if I'm correct that's the amount of games during the Premier League season every single week starting around week five play your youth sub in your youth get the youth in there and it's not just that Wayne Rooney with an absolute brilliant pass to Marcus Rashford for that goal but what I find amazing is that just the as you've pointed out like the presence of Zlatan and Pogba and you know playmakers in the midfield playmakers up top right it's not that different of a Manchester United team and I don't mean that by the players, I mean that in the counter-attacking spring yeah. that happens with them. Just by adding one or two guys that actually can finish, they have less shots through two weeks of the Premier League season than they did through two weeks of the Premier League season last year, except they were converting on yeah. them. And guess what? The ball hits the back of the net, and all of a sudden you have a more enjoyable product. Because winning ugly is one thing, but still winning in the way that they did is a reason for Manchester United fans to at least get on their feet and get excited for the season. Last year when they won, oh my God, it was a. And I like Juan Mata. I like I like Juan Mata, but it was a Juan Mata botch scissor kick goal. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was it was either it was either a moment of genius, <coughs> you're absolutely right, or it was a long ball into Fellaini and it scrapped and fell into the box. That's what I liked about Manchester United's uh, ability to win in this game is they never changed much. They brought in some familiar faces Wait, they and they brought in Mkhitaryan uh, and Rashford. Oh my God, has he been speed. fantastic though? He looked. Great, right? Mkhitaryan needs to start the next game. I think most Manchester United fans will agree. But it was the same style of goal that was always going to happen. They try to penetrate in behind and they try to cut the ball back from midfield runners. But your point is valid. Uh, I always stated that you have to introduce youth in order to groom them along with you. You don't introduce them out of need. You, add a, you introduce them out of your uh, willingness to try and help them grow. Louis van Gaal introduced Marcus Rashford because he had no one else. 
he had nothing else to do. Whereas uh, Jose Mourinho has proved that you can adjust as a manager. He's always had this uh, aura about him that people would state, oh, he doesn't like young players. He likes players that know what they're going to be doing. But Marcus Rashford is mature ahead of his years, proved last mm -hmm. year that he can perform in the Premier League. Uh, and Jose Mourinho introduced him at the right time. Rashford's obviously chomping at the bit. He stated in an interview that he's not uh, he's not completely happy with the amount of playing time that he's got. But if you've got someone who's antsy on the bench, who's ready to come on and make an impact, combine that with starters that you know are vowing for uh, to, to help this team move forward and continue to progress, that's a great recipe right there. What I wanted to reiterate is what I talked about on, a re on my recap clip, is that Wayne Rooney came under so much scrutiny throughout that game, and he didn't have a great game. But it's... Manchester United fans um, are complacent, even though this is what they've been wanting for. Like, they want, they wanted this last year. They wanted this winning mentality. They wanted their team to, to provide a sense of confidence when you're traveling away from home. That they, even if a team is, is uh, defensively sound, as whole city were throughout the majority of that game, you still are confident you can win that game. So they don't have anything else to complain about. So they just want to zone in on something that they can focus their criticisms. Right, right. When Rooney's misplaced eight passes out of nine, this is a disgrace. No, you need, this should be coming you need off. A, you, okay, I think it, as, as fans, speaking for the fans here, you need a scapegoat. Mm -hmm. Always a scapegoat. Always one player you can blame it on. Like take every team in the history of sports. There's always somebody you can narrow focus, even when you're winning. Everything's great except for... Oh, nine out of ten things, that number one. If we could right. change this, we'd be unbeatable. Exactly. And if we change it, oh, but what about that's that? That's true. And that's true, though. So I'm not going to you know, crush the fans for having a scapegoat. As a fan of many different sports teams, I have scapegoats all the time. I'll, I'll lay the blame on whoever I feel <laughs> deserves the blame. But However, uh, I did want to mention the fact um, that the Manchester Derby coming up, yes. uh, compared to last year's, where you can drop a pin and hear it drop, ding a ding ding Right? Should not be the case this season, no. given the two styles Hopefully. of play we're about to see. Hopefully not. And with uh, the goals that Manchester City have been scoring freely, uh, it, you would you would love to believe it. Freely is the right game. term, especially when you have Kevin De Bruyne serving up balls on a the silver Gaston. platinum platter. Seriously. Did you see he's, his, he's his set piece balls. assist? Did you see it? When you get Fernandinho banging in headers. Did you drool? A little bit. I drooled. Cleaned it up. That silver platter, fortunately, came with a garçon One with light. a waiter to wipe off my... I uh, with a napkin to wipe off my jewelry. He, the Manchester City, as I will get on to, are... There's still some lapses in concentration at the back. That oh, but when they Joe click, from when goal they click, though, offensively, oh my yeah, God, it's true. Francis. But removing Joe Hart from goal doesn't uh, immediately resolve the problems at the back. You've seen how upset Guardiola was that well, they right. conceded that goal. If you don't put a goalie in at all, then you know, it's <laughs> really gonna, hard to... <laughs> goals. But again... Because I didn't get to finally like kind of summarize my point on I'm Rooney. Sorry. Sorry. Is if Go on. is if uh, Zlatan scored or uh, set up the, the that winning uh, that winning assist or had that uh, moment of brilliance that Wayne Rooney had, is people would be like, Zlatan had such a good game. He's just so influential. When the reality is, Zlatan was guff throughout that game. Nothing stuck. His movement was selfish. His uh, his shooting from distance. He was looking to introduce his teammates. But that's not me going to criticize him collectively because he's had a great start. But just because he's the new familiar shiny piece, it doesn't mean that he that Wayne Rooney deserves all the criticism. Mourinho knew well and truly that if uh, Wayne Rooney could find himself into a position of uh, space, that he was going to provide an assist. He was going to understand that Marcus Rashford was in there. That doesn't make up for the collective 89 minutes that he didn't play to his best. But I, th I think you trust Jose that if he's not subbing Wayne Rooney, it's not because he just doesn't have anyone else to bring on. There's plenty of... Uh, players that he can bring on. They're, they're rich in depth now. He, he has the luxury that LVG didn't. Francis, Zlatan is never Guff. Yeah. Guff is occasionally Zlatan. Guff is Zlatan. Guff occasionally. way to Zlatan. But, so you're impressed with Manchester City? Is that the final point? I'm in, I was impressed with Manchester City's goals. I think how they scored is something that you're going to see repeti like repeatedly. Uh, it was unselfish play, mm -hmm. including an unbelievable build. Was it Sterling you had two? Sterling, Sterling had, two. had two. His first. Could have had four. He could have had four. Their ability to knock on the door. I think you're very much right that the uh, that Joe Hart, without uh, a goalie coming in or a, not a top tier level goalkeeper, it's going to cause some problems to anchor the back four. I get that defense. Like defensively, they probably have some issues. Yeah. Right. Uh, I don't think it's enough of an issue that it would prevent them from contending for a Premier League title and splashing around in the Champions League. Because when you get those, pep, as you mention all the time, the Pep Guardiola triangles together, it's really nice to see Pep Guardiola taking a page out of Phil Jackson's book. It's just fine. No one knows that reference, but it's very, very nice. Uh, very valid. The way they score is easy. 
Yeah. It didn't, it just doesn't seem like it's a a burden on the players. They could have had the passing, the structure, the headers, where they're placing these balls. I'm just looking and going, man, this is must be fun to play in Manchester City's attacking front this year. For Sterling's first goal, they could have had another five or six that was a direct uh, mirror image of that goal. Like yeah. they had Nolito tucking around behind, who's very he's been impressive so left, far. Very dangerous. He's, I, I talked about how. His assist record was impressive last year. He, he can contribute with goals, but he's uh, very good at getting in behind and then using David Silva as that anchor because David Silva could obviously turn the ball through the Ivan Needle. Brilliant. And he finds space in behind. Nolito cuts it back, and you've got your midfield runners coming in the same way that if D Douglas Costa was holding out wide in Bayern Munich, then Thomas Muller would tuck in a little bit right, if he right, was right. holding that front three. Or whoever's playing wide right would tuck in. That's what Guardiola loves to do. He loves to... Uh, to exploit one area of width and have the other players tuck in. So you form those triangles. Um, we'll talk about tactics. So there's a Man City, the Manchester Derby coming out. I'll break down all the tactics and you guys can see that. I but love moment, I'm a huge fan of triangles. It's at that. the moment, Manchester United show that they can win uh, with their backs against the wall up against adversary, proving that depth can win the Premier League. Manchester City, um, proving that they have the ability to score goals freely. Arsenal get back on track with a confident 3-1 win oh, without a striker. Nice. Up top, Ozil scores, Alexis Sanchez looks good. Um, and uh, Liverpool looks like guff. Liverpool 1-1 one, one <laughs> with Tottenham Chelsea mechanical. Uh, and it seems that the Premier League is as we expected. It's hard to call early on as it will be going forward. But we'll be here to break it down every step of the way. Jason Rubin 91 on Twitter. Francis underscore Maxwell. I'll see you guys very soon. Clean off week three. Week three's done. <laughs>